Hey, it's Jason with Novice Temps, and a friend of mine came up to me and asked me to help her make a trophy for a pencil fighting tournament that she's putting on. So I've come up with some ideas. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to go with a two-tiered layout. So you have the base platform and then an upper platform. I'm going to make a pile of broken pencils with a figure holding a pencil triumphant on top of the, the fallen enemies. Um, the pillars we're going to make into pencils. And there'll be a plaque probably on some sort of base in the center. So uh, the figure is probably going to be the hardest part. We're going to try to cast that out of aluminum. So we'll do a, a foam carving um, and bury it in sand and pour metal over it so that the metal replaces the foam. And if that doesn't turn out, then we have some backup strats. We might like go to Archie McPhee or something and get one of those giant pencils and, and mount that on top of the, the mound of pencils. So I have my Grant Thompson Styro Slicer here, and we're going to use this to chop up the ball to make it a mound shape. And we're also going to use it to make the figure on top of the mound. It's time to get uh, gluing. So here's the uh, finished mound of pencils. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. And this is gonna set the scale for the rest of the trophy. For the platforms for the trophy, I've got some beautiful carbonized ash. So I'm just gonna run it through the planer a couple of times to take down the, the surface layer uh, and get rid of these grooves in it. So you can see how pretty this wood is after it's plain. My carbonized ash is all planed down and now I just gotta cut it to thickness. Um, so what I'm probably gonna take is this little section right here because you've got all this figuring that's going on right there. I'm gonna use my topper, my dead pencil mountain uh, as kind of a guide to see how thick I want it. And I'm gonna set a stop so that I can make sure that my top and bottom platforms are exactly the same. Now it's on to casting the figure to stand on top of the pile of dead bodies. So we have a little template of a guy doing a Michael Jordan pose, uh, kind of. Um, and I'm just going to cut out a bunch of these from this foam, and we're going to glue them all together into a thick stack, and then do final shaping from there. Um, I've got, you see that his feet are way off the edge, and I'm going to use uh, the the extra space down here to make uh, my in gates for the aluminum and I'm just gonna do that on like two or three of these slices of foam uh, and then the rest will just be the, the guy by itself um, but I'm gonna do a large gate for the hand for the foot and for the other foot uh, so that the aluminum has a good path into all the different high points of the sculpture The guy has all his layers now, and that means we need to start doing the shaping. So I'm going to start by using a hot knife. This is a, one of those wood burning kit things that I got. And I'm just going to round off everything, uh, and that'll start giving it the shape, uh, or letting me see the shape that it's going to take, uh, so I can further refine it from there. And then after that, we're going to sand it, and then it'll be ready for casting. Here's the shaped figure done with the hot knife. Um, so I tried to move this, this foot forward a bit, bring this foot back a bit, move this hand forward a bit and this hand back a bit, um, shaped the head a, a little bit. Uh, it's starting to get a little fragile, um, so we're just going to go to sandpaper and smooth out all the surfaces, try to get that head a bit rounder. Uh, and once that's done, it'll be ready for casting. Here's the uh, figurine after it's been all sanded down using emery board and a broken strip sander. So 
there's still some texture to it, but I think it'll look pretty nice. Next step, make this metal. Metals uh, should be cold enough. It's still a little warm, but it should be fine to pull out. So we'll see how we did. Okay. It looks like we have a mostly successful cast. So we can separate the hand, um, smooth out some of that. The body looks great. The feet look great. This hand's a little funky. Um, it didn't get filled in all the way. Um, this hand turned out better than I expected with it breaking off. So that's good. Um, if we clean up some of this spatter, it'll be a lot better. So not too bad. I was cleaning up the casting on the belt sander. I'm mostly taking down that foot peg for where I'm going to mount it to the rest of the trophy. And I broke off his lower hand. So I got a piece over here. Now, I don't want to go through the trouble of recreating the figure. So I'm just going to glue that hand back on, and hopefully nobody will notice. I've got my character all shaved down. I managed to separate the arm from the head, uh, and I epoxied back on this arm. I was about to mark the foot of the uh, statue that goes on top, but this pencil is too large for the hole. So, uh, since I was going to try this anyway on the columns, I thought maybe turn my drill press into a lathe to take down the excess. Yeah, that's plenty. Sweet! I have a marking stick. So I punched my mark. And that should be plenty for the drill bit to follow. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Uh, I don't. It doesn't really matter how deep it goes. Uh, I just don't want it to poke out the sides. Um, and I'm just gonna do my best to make sure that he's not gonna wobble. Uh, wish me luck. So I want to put a little decorative edge on my platforms. So I'm just going to chamfer, so make a, a another facet, 45 degree, um, along the lengths. And I'm just going to do the top side of both the platforms. Uh, with For that, I've got my router table. Um, I've got a chamfer bit set up with a fence. Um, I don't really need a fence because it's got a bearing on it, but whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to take a little bit off the corners on all sides, and it'll give it a nice little facet all around the edges. So a real quick process, but puts a nice little facet there, gives a little bit of dimension that a straight board doesn't have. The figure on top is all done. Just going to spray paint him now. Well, that's one coat. Probably do a couple. The next step in the trophy is to build the columns store. And this is going to be the eraser and the metal eraser holder that's on all pencils. The rest of the pencil I'm going to make out of this 2x4. So I'll have the octagon column and I'll have the eraser cylinder. And I'll join them on the end using probably a dowel to, to join both of them since it'll be end grain to end grain and that doesn't really work. You kind of need long grain to long grain and a dowel will provide that. Um, I'm also going to use that same dowel to join them to the platforms.
There's a slight drift in all of these boards, but it's not enough to make a difference. Um, what happens is uh, I, I shouldn't have been cutting them like that. I should have set up a, a rip fence to rip it. Um, I like using the table saw sled because I made it, and that's not a good enough reason to always use one. Now I just have to uh, cut off the corners and make these octagon shaped. So to take this down, uh, I want to cut off a third of the a third of each side. There we go uh, on each pass. So there'll be a third taken off, third left, a third taken off. The saw is at uh, 45 degree because uh, when you have 90 degrees, you take off 45 degrees, you get an octagon. And I killed the breaker again, yay. My octagons are all cut, and I'm pretty pleased. <laughs> I was a bit of a dork, and I didn't film anything today. Got the, uh, the nice conical shape there. Um, I didn't go all the way down to a point or down to the dowel because that's going to sit in my platform uh, and I just I just needed it to be a point be some sort of taper so this looks amazing I started with a really aggressive and then just went straight to a, a quite fine uh, grit sandpaper on my strip sander um, and it looks awesome I added just a touch of paint to the top to show a little graphite and I have you know a bunch of pencils so the other thing I did was uh, I was painting the erasers um, and the reveal on the, re the erasers is pretty phenomenal. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Um, so I've got the silver. I, I did the pink first and then taped off the pink to do the silver. Um, so let me show you. Actually, I might get some a set of hands here. Woo. So here we go. Isn't that awesome looking? It's so satisfying. Beautiful pink eraser. So let me do the other one too. Woo. These things are so cool. Oh, I love it. It's so awesome. So the other thing I did tonight was uh, I glued together some more of the uh, carbonized ash into a block and then used my table saw at its very tallest setting in order to cut this down. Uh, on the sled, the saw just barely nicks the top edge of this block, but it worked um, and it looks beautiful. Uh, I just eyeballed the dimensions for this. Um, and this is totally gonna work. Now it's on to letter pressing. Okay, let's see how this turned out. So, you can read that. Pencil fighting champion. So yesterday I had a friend in the shop with me, uh, so I didn't do any filming, but I can show you what I did. So after I punched the, uh, the stencil, um, I mounted it to the block of wood. I first tried contact cement, but it just peeled off this wood for some reason. Um, would not stick. Uh, so then I went with uh, um, epoxy and it worked, but you can see there, there we go. This corner really wanted to come up uh, and I was having a hard time just gripping it down, uh, making it, um, making it stay down until it dried, uh, that it didn't, it didn't stick down. I mean, it's on there, it's permanent, or as good as, as permanent as it can be. Um, then I polished up the, the top with a uh, Dremel, and it actually looks pretty nice. Um, some of the letters got a little faded, but if you, in the right light, 
the, like that M on champion. It's a little bit light, but it, you can read it. You can definitely tell what it says. Um, I got my trophy base all glued up. Um, and that shouldn't be going anywhere. And it's fairly straight. I'm sure it's not perfect, but it'll do. Uh, so all that's left is assembly. And there we have it. We have our pencil fighting trophy. It's pretty sturdy, a little heavy. I don't think I'll have any problems with it sticking together. The main issue might be this guy moving around. That's where I filled the uh, screw down here with hot glue. That should prevent most of his movement. I also put some dabs right around his base. Um, I love that he's standing on top of this pencil, the conquering victor, holding a official Ticonderoga pencil in his hand. I just put a little dab of hot glue on his hand to keep that from moving around too much. You could still easily get this out of his hand. You can read the, the plaque. The plaque is a good size in the, uh, in the base there. We've got a nice foot of rubber also concealing the screw. Um, the edge is a little uneven. My scalpel isn't that sharp, but it'll, it'll do. Here it is, all its majesty. Pencil fighting champion. The conquering fighter on the mass of dead bodies. We got the nice pencil columns. I like it.